I'm Heather Murray and you're in my studio, uh, my new studio. Uh, the last uh, class uh, uh, tutorial that I did, I was in another studio. This one is quite delightful. It's three floors. It's smaller. Um, the natural light isn't as great, but I still work with it. It's a lot of fun um, and more space to store all my extras. <laughs> Um, I want to um, take you through um, this wonderful project. I think it's wonderful. A few people have asked about it. It's a tall, tall girl portrait. These are small tall girls I've got here, but um, you can make them any size. Um, this one is just from found board on my property. Um, you can find wood everywhere pretty well. It seems like people are always pulling apart sheds and, and buildings and throwing out their wood. So, so here's a recycling project to put it to good use. Um, if you've taken my mixed media portrait class before, you'll recognize some of these techniques. It's more an expansion on what I did already and um, it's using slightly different materials, but basically if you get the idea, um, then um, you shouldn't find this project so too difficult. So I'm calling this project uh, Mini because <laughs> she's actually Maxi, but we're going to call her Minnie. And um, I think you'll have a lot of fun with her and um, you'll have brilliant results, I'm sure. Okay, so you ready to learn? Here we go. Welcome to my studio. I thought I would offer a brief tour of where I work and come on in. This is a studio which is housed in a 1866 uh, courthouse for the county and I believe this might have been a holding cell of some sort because there are still bars on the windows. I can open the window uh, but um, I can't get out that way if I wanted to. So it's pretty compact. Um, you can see Frida, who is being impersonated by um, Salma Hayek in a poster on my wall in the reflection. And I have all my special belongings around me. I have a lot of old um, collectibles and dolls and posters and things and, and art that other artists have uh, given me. So it's a, it's a nice space to work. Here's my golden sink. It's golden because it's special. It's not necessarily too rich looking, but it's really helpful to have a place to wash your brushes and your hands. And so right here. We're coming up to the second floor now. There's bars <laughs> and my table where I work most of the time. Uh, the space for storage for canvases and um, other stuff. Yeah a few of my paintings on the wall. I find it's important to have some art around me. It just reminds me of why I'm here. And um, it also helps me reflect on what I've done before and where I need to improve. There's a few of the tall girls I've been working on and uh, many is yet to be created, but um, certainly I've started on this series. Here's my other little drafting table with a few boards where we're going to be starting in a few moments. If you look upstairs, well, I guess I'm not going quite upstairs yet. I'm tentatively coming around. There's one more tall girl to look at, and she's um, she's finished now. And then we turn about, and we carefully go up the stairs. See carefully, because these steps have been decide, designed to step up differently, and they're actually quite comfortable. Um, here's some of my, this is my restful area. There's my radio and uh, a few of my old dolls and other such um, novelties <laughs> that I've collected over time. Um, there's, they seem more welcome here than they are in our home, so here they are. Um, we have a few um, other dolls down here and more below, I think we'll notice. And this is my sanctuary. I don't really do any art up here. I might do a little bit of reading or writing or reflecting, but it's nice to have the space and um, I'm grateful for it. Um, and I love the way it's been maximized. It was a very small area and here's like three levels where I can work in. 
You, here's looking down into the table, and you can see the lighting is pretty good. Um, and more storage. I'm happy to be in this space and uh, happy to show you my space. So, without further ado, we're going to continue on and um, we'll get started on me. Okay, here's an overview of some of the supplies you will need for this project. There's matte medium or matte gel medium. There's a photo matte paper for your image. Various sizes of brushes, acrylic paint, a palette, um, a space where you can get messy, and a plank of wood. Uh, and there you have it. Okay, so now the fun begins. Uh, we start with a big jar of gesso. Um, you could use a smaller jar too, but I find the large jars are more economical. Um, it doesn't matter what brand, whatever you can buy in your community. Um, I use just a regular uh, paintbrush that you'd use on walls because I, I need a big thick brush to cover the wood and I'm not really too concerned on quality um, because we're not really adding any detail, we're just covering. Think of the, the gesso as a primer. Uh, this is a very rugged piece of wood I'm working with. It's an old barn board that I discovered way back on my property. Uh, you might be able to scour your neighborhood or your backyard or a shed and find some wonderful pieces of wood that have just been lying there waiting for your art to, to happen. So anyway, you can see that the coverage is not all that easy to do because um, there's a lot of uh, grooves in this wood. But anyway, it's fun to cover it, and there's really anyone can do this. It's kind of meditating to uh, run your brush along the wood and feel the texture and listen to your music in the background. You can see I have a few boards ready to uh, go here, and often that's the way I like to work. I like to have a few pieces primed and ready to go. So we're working on mini right now, so let's just see what happens next. Okay, now we're going to talk a little bit about how we work with our image. Um, we need our gesso to dry on the wood and we need to find an image that works for us. And in this particular case we're looking at a, a portrait of a woman that's um, clear, crisp. Um, I work with as many copyright free images as I can on the web but I also scan my own old photos. You can use either way. Um, here's a photo that I already have in my photo collection. I'm cropping it. That's the first thing. You all have your own photo editing programs, so um, if you have questions in the class, I can answer them more fully. Um, but I, I don't want to put too much time and effort into this section because everyone has their own way of working with their uh, photo editing programs. But here I am cropping Minnie. I don't need her dress. Uh, I need a little bit of her shoulders, and I need her head. Um, and I also need to know that she's nice and crisp. So I look for really high contrast black and white photos or I try to manipulate them so that they are a little bit more high contrast when I'm working with them. This works better when you want to add the paint. Uh, it gives you more information to work with. Um, sometimes you may be looking for a more faded effect. If that's the case, that's fine. Here she is cropped. 
it's ready to go. And if you see, I'm just looking at my Picasa program. I think I mentioned that. <laughs> and um, I'm saving her. Um, and I'm ready to print her as well, too. So I print a full size. I go to the full page for Minnie because she's on a large piece of wood and I need a full size headshot. I still don't know what that will look like, but I'm pretty sure it'll fill most of it at eight and a half by 11 page. And as people who have taken my class before realize, I, I do suggest photo matte paper if you're printing out an image from your computer. It's, it's hardy, it takes the paint well, um, I think in terms of longevity, you're working with a better quality uh, paper. Uh, and that's always a good thing when you start with a good product. Here she is printing out. It's a little dark there because my computer is in a dark corner of the house. But anyway, she's coming out. And you can see she's quite contrasty and huge. Okay. This is another fun part. I, I find it very relaxing to cut out my, my image and I use, you can see my really childish scissors here um, and I really hope this isn't repetitive for those of you who have taken a course before but I'm trying to adapt so that anyone who takes any class can enjoy all the steps. So here I am cutting out the image and I'm really cutting out her background. So trying to get all the edges around her hair um, every little detail that defines her and gives her personality. So you, I think this is really important to pay attention to and to take as much care and time as, as you need to, to make her um, complete and to erase all the details you don't need by cutting them away. Sometimes I do this part while I'm waiting for my gesso piece to dry or um, I also often will paint the background um, first and then do the cutting but it really doesn't matter what order you do it in as long as you you know that your surface is dry when you um, when you apply your image to it so. and you don't really need to invest in in wonderful materials or expensive materials for these projects um, as you can see my scissors are pretty pretty lame but <laughs> I'm enjoying using them anyway, and they seem to produce the desired results. Okay, so um, the gesso is dry and I've chosen um, kind of a, a red tone to paint my, my piece of wood to give us a backdrop for Minnie. Uh, I don't know why I chose red and you might find that as well. You, there's certain colors that appeal to you so you just start with a color. Um, there's my very well painted palette. Um, goes to show you can keep using it over and over again and it still works. <laughs> Anyway, here I am um, painting as much of the board as possible. Um, sometimes I'll only paint half the board where the figure is going to be uh, placed over, over top of, but I try to do as much as possible before I start doing the next step, which is adding matte medium to the back of my cutout image. You can see I didn't wash my paintbrush very well. There's a little bit of red paint mixed in with the matte medium. It won't hurt. I recommend using matte medium or matte gel medium. A heavier matte gel medium will give you more of a glue-like um, consistency, which is nice for getting your image on nice and flat. Um, it looks awkward because I'm actually trying to film this while um, <laughs> applying the, the matte medium. But you probably when you do it, it will be way less awkward. Um, and usually when I do it, it's less awkward. And as you can see, uh, one thing I didn't show you is I tend to put the matte medium on the substrate as well. So that gives you the best adhesion um, if you do it that way. Once I 
I tamp it down or I flatten my image down. Um, I also give it another coat of matte medium because this gives you another surface to work on um, when you start putting your paint on your figure. So I'm flattening her, flattening her down as best as possible. I will trim the edges of her hair afterwards. Now I'm introducing the China Pencil. It's one of my favorite uh, tools in creating my mixed media portraits. And one thing I really enjoy about the China Pencil is you can really get some dynamic line work and uh, it makes it easier to follow with your acrylic paints when you provide a little outline. Minnie's getting a, a suggestion of an arm here and uh, we're just basically drawing in some guidelines so that I can paint her and uh, know where her skirt starts and her blouse begins and we're giving her some shape. I can always change this later but right now I just need a little bit of sketching to give myself an idea of mini shape. You might remember the china pencils from when you were a child. You can unwrap the paper and make the, the lead extra long it seems kind of magical. There's a little thread that you pull down and unravel the brown paper and voila, you have a great drawing tool. Well, I think Minnie's ready for a little color. Uh, I'm showing you some raw umber. It's a, a tube of acrylic paint I have, and there's my well-layered palette. A fine brush. Again, um, other artists may have a different perspective, but I tend to use a uh, different quality of materials, whatever I can get my hands on, really. Um, this brush doesn't have to be too fine or too wonderful because I'm just coloring in a little bit of detail um, around Minnie's face. Um, her hair, anything that I think might need it, like a darker shade. I'm following the shadows that are, are really given to me by the, the image. So I'm using the raw umber straight up um, and putting a little definition around her facial features. Uh, I stress little um, because I think it's better to start with a little bit of paint and work up. Where I find most people get frustrated is they put a big blob on or a big chunk of color and then it's really hard to take it back. Um, you can always layer over acrylic but I find it's easier to start really really soft with a paintbrush with not too much paint, um, a little bit of water on it, dab it, or use a little bit of gel medium because what that does is it thins out your color a little bit so it helps you not to go too overboard. So I'm just putting a little gel medium into my palette and um, mixing it a bit with my raw umber and that way I can stretch my color a little bit without having to add more paint. Um, the gentler the layering the more effective your results. If you want your figure to look fairly realistic it's almost like there's a sense of it like you have the information on the page or on the painting you're just following the shadows with your, your umber or whatever shade of brown or um, you can choose other shades really. I'm using a, a raw umber here but I think brown works well with the vintage look of this this young lady. This starts to form the character of your uh, portrait. Um, these tall ladies are a little bit more fun so they don't have to be perfect. Here's a, a little bit of uh, yellow ochre that I'm putting into my palette and as you can see in my typical messy style I just put it on top wherever there's a dry area <laughs> and here I'm mixing it a little bit with the matte medium again 
and you may wonder what is she doing now um, but I've I experiment with my colors a little bit. I'm giving her a little bit of highlights in her hair. Um, I don't like it to always be solid colors. Uh, if you add a little bit of a lighter shade or some, a complementary um, color to your figure, you're going to get a more interesting, um, a more interesting full-rounded person. And we know Minnie has personality, so that's what we're looking for. We're looking to give her. A look that will make you want to stare at her and enjoy her and um, see her for all her beauty. And so here we go. We've got another shade here of acrylic paint. It's a, just a true red. I'm not sure uh, at this juncture what um, shade of red it is, but it doesn't matter really. You just use a red that works for you. Um, I'm tampering it down a little bit. I'm using my gel medium to water it down a little bit rather than using water. It flows a lot better. You'll probably find you enjoy working with it. It, it just helps you avoid the temptation of using too much paint. And again, just a light touch on her cheeks. Um, you never see those really bright rosy balls on people's faces unless they're cartoons. So I try to emphasize that with my figures as well. There's a little bit of color in her face, but to keep her looking more natural, less is more. I'm thinking, do I want to use more? I'm back to the black again. Um, I have rinsed out my brush in the meantime. I'm putting a little black in her pupils just to make them pop out uh, and to define them as being different from the rest of her face. Um, sometimes, if I have a very thin brush, I'll do what I'm doing now, and I'll also define the top, the top edge of the eye, and maybe add a few eyelashes, just to give, a, again, to help it to pop, and to make it look a little more realistic. I'll often add a little bit to the eyebrows or work with the shadows a bit more if I feel that they need it. As you can see, I'm layering it and I'm adjusting as I go along. Um, I'm adding a little darkness to the hair as well. And I may add more later. Uh, I, I rather use a little bit less right now and get the desired effect and look at it when it dries and, and then add again. That's the beauty of acrylic paint. You're not stuck with it. You can move um, move on on and forward and over and uh, it's pretty difficult to make a mistake if you go slowly. So this kind of extras that I add is hard to describe. It's very personal. I just look at where I think the figure needs a little bit more definition, um, a little bit more shadow, and I work with that. You can see I'm putting very little paint. You, you might not even notice that there's very much difference from when I started with Minnie, but um, it starts to look less like a paper image and more like a painting. If you go easy like this and use less paint, um, a little gel medium or a little matte medium, and then just build up from there. You can see that even adding that little bar of black in her, in her fabric, in her collar, um, again adds more emphasis and depth to the, the portrait. And now I'm just putting a little bit more black definition of the line of her shoulder. Um, I'm following the, the china pencil line, but I'm adding a little more so it makes it easier to follow. If it's a very flat board that you're using, you probably can use just the china pencil and that will be enough. I have a lot of grooves and um, there's a lot of texture to this wood so the china pencil was a little bit more challenging to give me the detail I was looking for. And there she is so far. Looking good. Okay, for some strange reason, I did not um, 
record or I deleted my painting mini mini's top purple but as you can see I've painted it purple and of course then it didn't look quite right to me and I painted the background pink um, a gray tone because I thought it might work more effective with her purple uh, top. Um, I think this is really important to convey that I don't always know which direction I'm going when I start a piece and um, this this was an evolution this particular portrait and quite honestly even when I started to put the gray on I really wasn't quite happy with the way she was turning out it just didn't work for me um, so maybe that's why I erased that segment because I wasn't too happy about it but here's a little clip just to show you um, that I did indeed try to correct what I'd done and it still wasn't working for me. Um, so I guess the lesson is, or if you want to call it the, you know, the process is you have to keep trying till you get the colors and the look that you're striving for. So at this point I didn't give up. I went away from Minnie for a little while to, and thought I would come back and look at her when I maybe felt a little bit differently about things. All right, so I've come back. I've taken a second look at Minnie and I realized this is not what I want to do with her. This is not the color scheme that works for her. So I thought, well, why not try blue? It's a, it's, blue is my fallback color. Uh, I love most shades of blue. Um, I'm painting directly on top of her purple. <laughs> So right away I start to get a different kind of effect from my painting, my portrait. I'm happier with her. Uh, it's often hard to know which way your painting is going to go when you look at it. Uh, some people have a clear vision and they go right into it. And once in a while a piece works that fluidly for me. But this is probably more an accurate depiction of how I work. I start with one color. Um, sometimes I paint over images I've already painted over. Um, I love doing that because sometimes the old portrait peeks through and here you can see I'm covering right over all that purple and uh, she's getting a top of blue. I don't even mind if a little bit of the purple shines through. I think that it adds to the effect of the painting and the portrait and because we're looking for a rustic kind of folk arty look with this piece. It doesn't really matter if uh, the other color shines through a little bit. Although here, here you can see I'm adding a lot more blue. Um, so we'll see what happens. She seems to be popping up a lot more from her background and I do enjoy that effect. I, I didn't mention this but I did add more matte medium as well to give me more fluid kind of a painting process. Um, there's some line work in there you can see that I've left and sometimes I use, it's a little unconventional, but I use the end of the brush to scratch in to my portrait. Um, I like it to look like it's been um, a little distressed and that's one way of achieving that. It's purposeful. I'm much happier with the blue. I hope she is too. <laughs> well, Minnie's looking pretty good. Um, I was just thinking that it might add a little bit more, um, well, a little more oomph to her blue blouse with a little bit of red polka dots. So I've dipped my fine brush in red paint and I'm giving her some flourish and some flounce and some character and um, she's definitely making a fashion statement with her dots uh, and I think they're actually quite fun to do. So you can see how when you add an extra element like polka dots that you're um, providing your portrait with a playful element. It changes something. There was a little bit of conservative to her 
her blue blouse, but now the polka dots kind of elevate her to a new fashion status. <laughs> Very relaxing doing polka dots. Just a little dab here and there. And I cover as much of the blouse as I can, going right up to the edges. And then, because I have the red paint already, I just add a little bit more red to her lips. It's nice to use your paint as much as possible, rather than wasting it, so while it's still wet and fresh, it's great to be able to add a little bit more to your portrait. Those are really red lips now. <laughs> a few more dots, a little bit of matte medium mixed in to give it more of a liquid quality. And there she is. Lovely. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little commercial break. It's a couple of my outdoor critters uh, entertaining you. Uh, and I thought we'd take a break from Minnie for a moment. Uh, we are getting closer, as the commercial alluded to, and I'm using some yellow ochre paint now to paint her skirt. I've, I'm also using a larger brush than uh, the detail brush I was using earlier, the finer brush. And I would even use a larger brush than this typically because I want as much coverage as possible. I'm trying to cover the white gesso and uh, I'm not looking for a translucent effect, I'm looking for a solid effect. So, and if I wasn't filming this movie, um, my painting wouldn't look so awkward. I typically could prop her up in a place that worked, but I wanted to make sure that you could see all the angles that I worked in and to see the idea that to be able to be aware of the idea that she's a long piece of wood and that we have to cover her entire, entire um, body. And uh, you can see there she is. She's still, there's still a ways to go, um, but we'll com complete the whole skirt. And I'm putting her up a little higher so you can see that the end of the wood is not even, and that's okay. That's actually going to serve as part of her flow in her skirt as well. And continuing to cover. As you can see, I didn't put the gesso on too heavy. It doesn't matter really. You could still, uh, it still works. And as again, this is more of a folky piece. Oops. <laughs> you can see we have a few glitches in this process. <laughs> anyway, here it goes just want you to be able to see the whole piece and the, the camera the camera frame does not allow for the whole long um, mini to be contained in one frame so I thought I would move it around and adjust it so you can see it a little bit better okay, adding a little bit more paint more matte medium we're almost finished if she'll stay put for us there you go
Okay, so uh, Minnie's on the ground now, so she's more stable. She's standing up. You can see how tall she is by her um, standing up pose. She is grounded. And I'm not going to guide you all the way through this process. You can just observe. But just to give you a bit of an overview, I'm just touching up. I'm using some raw umber uh, and some smudging and looking at how I can make her pop up a little bit more and add a bit more detail. So you can just watch and see what I do from here. Again, it's very individual. I Sometimes I'll finish a piece and go away from it, come back again and realize I want to alter it once more. But it's sometimes it's a good thing if you're, you're feeling you're not ready to complete a piece, to go away from it for a little while, come back and see your work in a fresh new way. Okay, I think we're finally here. The very last touches to pull our maxi mini portrait together. Um, you can see that I have some, well, maybe you can't see, but I, I'm using some gesso. I'm adding a very little tiny, tiny, tiny touch of red to give her a little bit of flesh tone. Unfortunately, or fortunately, the image that I had of, of uh, Minnie when she was um, enlarged had a lot of pixel dots on it. So it looks like she's very freckled or has some kind of um, a problem with spots. So I thought maybe I'd try to take some of them away. And gesso is great for coverage. So I'm just using some gesso. Um, and as I need it to be thinned, I'm using a little matte gel medium as well and just delicately going over the places that I want to refine. I really don't mind if we can't get it all then it's just part of who she is and that's okay. Everyone isn't perfect and neither is Minnie. She's got her own wonderful imperfections. <laughs> but this is what I'm striving to do. I'm trying to take away some of the dots and that will also achieve more of a painterly effect, I hope. As you can see, I am. It's kind of like one of those commercials that you can erase all your lines. It's a kind of a personal enhancement thing. <laughs> there she is. She's a little less spotty. And um, again, as I was saying earlier, you don't use a lot of paint. You can just use a little bit and it goes a long way. Use a little bit, let it dry, add a little bit more, and um, you, hopefully you'll get the effect you want. Now I'm putting a little brooch or medallion on her top. A little circle there while I have the white in my hand. Um, you can see that some of her top overlaps the paper onto the board, and I don't really let myself be too concerned about that. I try to blend it in with matte medium as well as I can, but I don't also worry. And nor should you. <laughs> it's going to happen. It's part of the whole process. 
So you really can't see where I'm doing here. This is a terribly bad shot, the ca camera angle, but I am blending a little bit more. And just I just continue to add more white, more gesso uh, for coverage. So you can see her a little bit better now. And a little bit where the highlights are going to be. And there you have her. The other thing I do towards the end is I add some more some more line work with my china pencil uh, to give the skirt some some creases, make it look a little more skirt like, and I'll carry those lines all the way down to the bottom. It works better if your paint's dry. The china pencil works way, far better. It might not really settle into the wood so well if your paint is still wet. So there, you've got some pleats in her skirt, and her skirt's completed, her top's completed. Um, the camera and the lighting may look may look a little bit like her um, her face and the background are blended, but in real life, I think she looks kind of all right. So a little more china pencil just to finish her off. And voila, See, she's complete. I also carry the paint over to the sides. I didn't show that either, but I, I will carry whatever color I'm working with around so it, if it's hanging on a wall, it has a more of a framed effect. There she is, she's less spotty, except for her blouse, it still has the spots. <laughs> and there's some little indentations. You can see all the little holes in the wood and um, all the ridges, and I think that just adds to her character. And I think she's finished. Thank you.